Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. Today we're going to carry on and conclude our examination of automation for this part of the project. We're going to talk about the automation panel. There's masses in it. It's going to take a while to cover, but I'll, I'll try to get it all done in one today. Before we set off on that, I'll point you at the, uh, the Patreon link below. Uh, it's an awesome way to help support me and my channel, help me carry on making this content. I really appreciate it. First thing we need to discuss today is the concept of virgin territories. I'm opening my automation panel by clicking the little E button and I'm going to go over to the settings tab. Now the layout of the automation panel is horrific. We've got a ton of random stuff in this settings tab. We've also got a ton of random stuff in this little drop down window here. You basically just have to kind of remember where everything is. But the function I want to talk about today is or at the moment is in the settings tab and it's this use virgin territory. When I created the automation on this track, I must have had this enabled. I can't remember why or how. Because we've got a big empty space in the middle. I'll demonstrate how Virgin Territories work by creating a load of automation. So Virgin Territories is off at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a ton of it in the middle with my range tool and then click delete. You can see Cubase has joined the automation together with this extra line. So there's basically a continuous stream of automation data. If these nodes were at different heights, then you'll have a scaled line in between them. Now, if I engage Virgin Territories and use my range tool again and press delete, now it completely removes all of the automation in that zone, basically creates a terminating and uh, starting node and leaves the rest of it in the middle completely empty. Now that doesn't mean the automation slider on your device is going to suddenly plummet to zero. It just stops that there is no automation. There's no active automation on the track. Now this can be sig significant for any number of reasons. You might have a gated signal that requires there to be active automation on the channel. That's one effect. You might want there to be no reduction. You know, the, 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 you could get a, an automation slope if you've got uh, one point high and one point low and you delete everything in between, then Cubase will by default, you know, draw a sloping line in between those two unless you've got Virgin Territories enabled. So it's just one of those things that I thought I should mention because we do have this tiny little dot of automation at the beginning of the project. What I want to do after I've deleted this stuff and that stuff is create another little automation point at about 14, just at the start of the part. So that when this, um, when this second synth line starts, the envelope filter is at the right level. Otherwise it could have, for instance, got to the end of the song, be set high, and then if I don't pass through that automation dot at the beginning of the song, it's not actually going to trigger. So I've just created that little automation marker at the beginning of the part. Now there is a way that we can actually join these two automation dots together, but in order to get to it, you need the info line enabled. This is at the top of the project and we can gain access to it. I have to turn me off from this little cog set up window layout and just make sure you've got the info line engaged and you've got this terminator function. It's pretty clunky, unfortunately. You basically have to select this, um, this final automation node and toggle it. <laughs> it started out as no, I toggled it to yes, turned it back to no, and it basically joins those two lines up together. Not the most elegant piece of programming you ever saw but these terminator nodes basically define whether or not there's virgin territory to the right of it. Sorry, it's clunky, I didn't write it. Um, what else have we got in the settings menu? Show data on tracks really annoys me when this is on. Uh, if you turn this on, basically you can see everything on the track, all the notes. Here are the pitch bend continuous data. You know, you might think, well, you might want to see it all. I shouldn't be too critical. I don't like it, it confuses the hell out of me. So I turn that feature off and now I can I can see the automation in the automation lane, but I can see 
the shaded pitch bend and notes in the part. That's absolutely fine by me. The next easiest one for us to pick off our list is reduction level. This specifies how intense the automation is. So if I set it to zero and draw some automation, we have lots and lots of data points. If I set it to 77% and do exactly the same thing, we have much less automation. So this is how you specify the granularity of the automation curves that you that you draw really useful if you've not got any cpu or data concerns whatsoever set it nice and low and have really really defined redu um, reduction level i tend to like quite a gentle reduction level i don't like to see too many automation points it's completely up to you the next thing that we're going to deal with is on the operations tab we're going to have a look at the difference between the various uh, recording modes. We'll deal with touch first. And I'm going to need the instance of Halion to help me with this demonstration. So I'll make this track a little bit bigger so it's easy to see what's going on. Get rid of that automation. And I'm going to draw a sine wave. Now I'm going to record some automation over the top. Let's say you want to do a little bit of editing on that automation, but as soon as you let go of the control, you want the editing to stop. That's what touch does. So engage automation, press play. As soon as I let go, it stops recording automation. Let's turn that down a bit. Undo that. In auto latch, when I do exactly the same thing, as soon as I let go of the control, it's going to carry on overwriting automation at the last level. Here we go. And let go. Now it carries on writing automation at that level. Now, can you see this little kind of snowplow effect it's got? In front, of the, um, in front of the song marker, there was a little line that was constantly in front of it. That is your return time. Return time is currently set to 341 milliseconds. If I make this longer, the snowplow is gonna have a bigger nose. There it is. So this is how long the automation takes to get to the next point to the right of it. Now we've got the horrible one, crossover, and I will confess I never use crossover. I think it's brain melting, but I will show you what it does. What I'm going to need to demonstrate this one is an area of a straight line. So what crossover is going to do is it's going to be a little bit like touch and a little bit like auto latch. I'll be moving my um, my control and you'll see all of the automation writing. Then I'm going to let go. What I then do is pick the control back up and move through to intersect the existing automation. And as soon as I do, the automation will shut down. Watch. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And now I dragged the control up through the automation. As soon as I reached the horizontal level that was the previous automation level, it shuts the automation down. The idea is that you might have some complex automation and you want to do some editing in the middle of it, but then basically not interfere with something else to the right. Don't ask me to explain it again. I hate it. <laughs> so uh, do with that information what you will. Um, just use touch and auto latch. That's pretty much my advice. Um, if anybody can tell me a compelling reason why I'm an idiot and I should be using crossover, please do. The various fill options aren't going to work particularly well in this context because we've already got automation data here and it will pretty much screw with it. But I will show you how they work. Basically, it, it does exactly that. It fills the automation curve according to certain criteria. 
So if I set loop, and give myself a little loop that doesn't interfere with anything too drastically. When I get the automation going, you can see me setting the level and I'm gonna stop and it sets the entire loop to the last selected level. So imagine I'm, de I'm dealing with volume. In fact, at this point, we'll actually switch to dealing with volume. I'll get rid of that automation example and we'll create ourselves a volume automation lane. We're gonna need this shortly anyway in order to look at trim. And the idea is that I've got my, um, my CC121 here with my automated slider. Put loop on. And now I'm gonna decide how loud I want the thing to be. And then when I let go of the controller, that will be the level that we operate on. There we go. As soon as I let go of the controller, because it's a touch sensitive fader on the CC121, it set the entire um, loop to that, to that automation level. And there you can see my automation points. Gaps is a way of filling in gaps that we've got from Virgin Territories. So if I just delete an area of automation in the middle and have gaps engaged, now, choose my volume, let go, and it fills everything in that hadn't been previously automated with that level. The suspend options can be really useful. Uh, let's say you've got, we've got this filter automation here and we want to keep that, but we've also got some volume automation. So you can see it getting quieter and louder. If I want to temporarily um, override that volume, let's say I'm recording a, a, a new part and I want to hear that synth nice and loud, I can suspend the volume automation, the little A uh, suspend light comes on to tell me that it's no longer going to do anything with the volume, but it will carry on doing the filtering on the rest of the automation over here. So it's leaving the volume control completely alone. When we get to the filter sweeps, they still work. So you can independently turn on and off all of these various suspend actions. Now that we've got some volume automation down here, I can show you trim. Now trim only works on volumes. The master volume of the track and also send levels uh, can be trimmed. If I engage trim, it's gonna put a new line. See this new line that appeared? That's the trim line. I'm gonna unsuspend my volume automation. And now this trim line allows me to effectively compress the automation that's underneath. So you can see here's my volume curve. If I pick this trim line up, you can actually hear that's the, the clicking of the, the fader on my, uh, on my controller. You can see it squashing or expanding the automation curve so it literally stretches the entire thing what you can basically do is draw your automation curve in and say I want 10% more than that I want it to be 10% more dramatic than that rather than having to redraw the entire thing you simply uh, turn your trim feature on and increase it by 10% and it literally just boosts the entire automation curve now this isn't immediately obvious, but you can create multiple trim points. It appears that the only thing that you can do is pick this thing up and drag it. And in fact, if you're in pencil mode, that is actually true. What would happen now is that I would draw automation behind the scenes. That's really confusing. I don't like that at all. You need to put the, you need to put it into select mode, basically with the arrow. And now when I click on the trim line, it turns it into a pencil and you can create new nodes. So you have to be exactly on the line and then it creates the node and then you can pick that trim node up and adjust it. Not pretty, but very effective. For smoothing and damping, you can see what it's doing to the volume to the volume automation curve behind the scenes. That's quite a complex algorithm that's being performed on it, but the functionality is clunky. If you're happy with your trim curve and you think this is how I want my automation to look, 
bring the little drop down button down and for some inexplicable reason here are your freeze options so you can see freeze the trim automation of the selected track and now the trim line has been set back to zero because the automation underneath has been permanently morphed to those settings so this is now the new volume automation curve and we've got a new trim line reset to zero also got some delete and fill options there but they're all pretty self-explanatory i'll leave you to sort them out yourself but i do want to make quick mention of the freeze trim option in the settings tab you couldn't make this up could you uh, i basically have that on manual uh, if you've got either of the others pass end or leaving trim mode you'll be playing with the trim feature perform one of those things accidentally and suddenly the trim gets frozen and that's your new value and you think no i didn't want you to do that you know i was just playing and now you've, you've frozen it and made it permanent so i leave freeze trim in manual mode and then you just can't get yourself in trouble and i'm also going to turn virgin territory off final quick look at these show buttons super obvious what these do they literally just turn automation lanes on and off the only extra thing to mention is this used only tick box is really useful. If I click sends, have a look at guitar sub, watch those sends there. It goes through all the sends, even if there's nothing on them. If I engage used only and click the sends button, it will only show me tracks that have any sends on because none of these do. We're not seeing anything. So I generally tend to leave used only on all the time. And then this is a way for you to see any of the automation that you've got on your various tracks or turn it all off so as uh, Han Solo once said may not look like much you know but anyway it, it, it is pretty good it is pretty powerful I just wish they'd redesign it and make it a bit prettier but so uh, you know all the functionality is there now, I've absolutely butchered the project uh, this time around so I won't click save so I'll just throw all of those changes away and revert back to the project as it was when we started. Thanks very much for watching this one. Hope to see you next time.